Hi, I'm that feeling you get when you're this close to touching another boy's knee. Leo, and welcome to In Bed with Leo. Today, we're going to talk about a show that I bumped up on the list because I just watched it a couple days ago because I have a lot of free time right now, and it's so good. So it's I Told the Sunset About You, which is a Thailand show that came out in 2020. And right now, the sequel, I Promise You the Moon, is airing right now. I think it's going to finish this week or next week. But it's really good, and I want to talk about it because some people on Twitter are talking about it, but I feel like more and more people should be watching it. So cast. We have Tev. He's the person whose eyes we see through for most of the show. He is considered straight in the beginning of the show and is kind of dating this female. And he knows Olio, who is the other person who they were friends in childhood, but they had a big argument we'll talk about later, and they are parted, but towards the beginning of the show they are reunited, and that's where the awkward chemistry comes. We also have Poon, which is Tez's brother, and he is the perfect thing in the world, and we're going to talk about why later, but he is the best we stand. We also have Tan, who is kind of the female friend, also romantic love interest of Tev, and she is kind of the girl sacrifice of the show, but she does turn out to be a really cool character, especially towards the end, and she is self-realized, so it's pretty awesome. And then finally we have Bass, who is this really perfect, adorable little love interest of Oyo. Um, and we'll see how that turns out, but Bass is really awesome, we love Bass. And he is kind of a male sacrifice, which is very interesting for one of these stories. They're also friends and the mother of Te, but we don't really talk about them right now. So, yeah. The main plot of this story is Te and Olio met each other at a spark. Uh, they both fear the noise of firecrackers, which we go into a couple times in the show. And they met as children because they were afraid of firecrackers and became friends ever since. And then Te really wants to be an actor. He loves this uh, Chinese TV show, which I don't know if it's actually real or not, but he idolizes this show and wants to be an actor, like the main actor. And Olio starts to love it too, and they do a play together, but Olio gets the part, and because of that, they cause an argument, and they separate because they're children, and that's enough to schism everything. Now, later on, they're seniors in high school, and they meet at a Chinese class cram school. They both need to learn Chinese in order to get into their college or preference. Then meeting again triggers this whole coming-of-age story, as well as a sexual discovery story, which is really good, and that's what we're going to talk about it. So that's kind of like a basic plot. Um, I'm going to try to go like a lot faster in this video because I want the time to be smaller. I tend to drum on way too much. So it's going to be smaller, so I might not hit all the points. So if there's any points that you think are really cool and we should talk about more, feel free to comment below. But let's get started. If you could summarize this show in one word, I would say... <laughs> accurate. This show is so incredibly awkward and painful and bloody and chaotic. Metaf met metaphorically bloody, but still. Um, they're teenagers. Um, even straight teenagers, like, they have no idea what they're doing. That's why high school dramas are so interesting, because they make stupid decisions, and they're weird, and they're interesting. So, um, that's kind of what's happening here. And I like just how they're able to just make it really, really, really awkward, but, like, in a good, accurate way. It's actually like on point, but if you ever seen Neon Genesis Evangelion, there's a scene that's really famous of when two of the characters are in the elevator, and it goes on for like over a minute of them just standing in awkward silence. This whole show is that awkward silence elevator scene.
but it's really good tension building, and the characters' faces and their like stiff teenage confused bodies are really good at like actually telling you a story of why they're being silent. Because like when you're a teenager, you don't understand things, so it's just like weird, and everything feels pressured. So it was really cool, and even though there was so much like awkward silences, their faces and their stares and their like body language was like so on point for like what you're going through, especially as a gay teenager at that time. I also want to point out that like this type of stuff doesn't usually happen. Like when you're a gay teenager, usually you spend your whole time like hiding in fear because like everybody else wants to like kill you essentially. So you don't really get this awkward, weird, confusing thing. So you become an adult when you have money and freedom, and then you become the huge flaming mess that these two are in this show. And when you're older and stronger and have more money, it causes a lot of like weird, horrible relationships with adults. So I think as life gets better in the future, um, kids are coming out earlier, this kind of stuff will be more and more. But just seeing a story like this and doing it really well was very interesting. Like this is pretty much what Calling Me By Your Name wanted to do, but like not the worst movie in the world. Uh, or it's actually a good show and not the worst thing ever. So yeah, it's really good. And like adults usually do this as adults because we're hiding all the time. So imagine gay dating is pretty much everything they're doing, but with adults with money and power. And it's just a messy bloodbath. So it was just really cool. And I liked how it goes, how they shaped it and everything kind of like went on with it. So let's talk about things. Um, there will be kind of spoilers in the show, like I feel like you kind of know how it's going to end anyways, but go watch it first if you're afraid of spoilers because I'm just going to talk about things and there might be spoiler. I won't going to like say everything, but yeah. An example of it being really awkward is like their first like sexual encounters. Um, they slowly hitch close, like the knee touching scenes where it's they like have the electricity of that. Um, the part there's like this really awkward scene where they like are rubbing <laughs> their thighs, each other's thighs, like they're reaching over and rubbing their thighs, and it was really awkward and funny. And then also um, they're like rubbing each other's backs and sniffing their necks, and like uh, it was really good because like even like just stuff like that, like you get sex at in high school and you learn about like how to have sex with a female even though most straight people still don't understand what's going on with sex but as like a gay person there's nothing really to tell you what to do like you can watch BL or look at porn and that's still not going to tell you everything so there's like awkward like we've all been our first sexual experiences like that awkward situation where like you're just exploring everything and it's incredibly painful to watch because like that's what happens so I really like that these kind of scenes happen because Usually you're watching a romance and it's like, ah, oh, it's kissing and everything goes into sparkles and lights out and you're happy, but this is like, I'm gonna rub your thigh for 15 minutes and our mom's gonna come in and we're gonna cry and bleed blood because we're so embarrassed. Like, these scenes are really poignant, awesome, and so awkward to watch, but like also so super cool. Another really cool thing about this is it's now, like it's really modern, like they're on Instagram all the time and there's stories and that's how they stalk each other, which I'll... We all do that right now anyways but there's no like gay pushback like some of their friends are shocked when they find out later on but like no there's no one like stopping them from being gay like they have all their internal fears because we have that in general like oh my god if they find out we're gay they might try to kill us because that's just the world we live in um but like no one stops them no one's ever like if you're gay i'm gonna disown you and they do have like their own miniature coming out but it's very small and like everybody's very appropriately happy for them. Like, case in point, Hoon, Tan Tu's brother, is like the best thing in the world. Like, he knows something's wrong with his brother, he's very nurturing to him, and then when he actually comes out, he's like, oh wow, that's crazy, but like, you're still my brother and I love you and I'll do anything to keep you safe and happy. And like, if mom doesn't like you for this, like, go, she can go screw herself. Like, Hoon says everything that needs to be said and he like, is always supportive of his brother, and that kind of like, family dynamic was like, insanely cool. And Oyo Haina has the same thing, where it kind of goes more with college, but then it kind of slips in, and his parents are still like, no bro, like, you're the best thing ever, we still love you because you're our son. So I really like, I love shows that have this kind of, just like, we love you and it's okay to be like this, and this show really encapsulates that really well.
now let's we can talk about the sacrifices. So we have Bass and Tan. The beauty of Bass. So everyone online when I see about see about this talks about Bass and how Olio is stupid for going after Ta and how Bass is so much better. And that's true. Bass is amazing, he's perfect, he's adorable, he's very sure of himself, and he goes after Olio. And that's well and good. But like the show makes it very clear that like Olio doesn't really have feelings for him. At first he's attracted to him just because like you're you know, you're a gay kid, another boy likes you, it's amazing. But it's, he kind of has like a crush and not actual feelings. He has feelings for Tuck. And Bass is smart enough to actually like understand this and like let him go. So to like push them back together, it wouldn't be fair to either of them. Also like, oh yeah, is a mess right now. He has a lot of things we'll talk about later going on. And Bass doesn't really have that. Like he kind of is okay and he like publicly announces his love for him in class. Like he's sure of himself. So that relationship wouldn't really help them. Also, teenagers shouldn't date and be together forever. And I like that that show shows this. Like, if you find your true love as a teenager, you still should date other people. We'll get back to them later. Like, just because Boss is really awesome, if they stayed together as teenagers, they'd be stagnant for the rest of their lives, and it's just not good. So, pairing out forever at a age is never a good idea. So I like that this show, even though Boss is amazing, uh, it doesn't work out because it can't. They're teenagers. That's good. That's okay. And then you have Tan. And Tan is the girlfriend, kind of. Like, they don't date until they go to college, so they actually never date. Um, and she's really cool, there's a lot of cool scenes with her. And you see Tan, like, slowly drifting away as he kind of realizes his feelings for Olio. Um, but there's a really cool scene with her where earlier she sees Tan looking at her bra and she has hibiscus flowers on it. I think they're purple or blue. And there's another scene later on that's like hardcore Love of Siam where she wants him to pick a color to color in the hibiscus flowers, and it's either red or purple. And I believe the red has something to do with Olio, but I can't remember why. But he chooses the red, colors the hibiscus flower, and like crazy straight logic, she has like a whole internal meltdown. It's like, oh my god, you don't choose me. And it's just kind of like Love Siam, where the mother tells Tong to choose the Christmas ornament. The only difference is Te is 100% unaware of what he's doing. And Tong is choosing, like, to be, like, he's announcing his homosexuality. And we can talk about that in the video because there's a lot to talk about with Love Siam. But this is a really good characterization of Ted because he's doing everything by feeling and not by awareness. So all of his, and that's being a teenager. Like, he's just running around in the dark and pep touching things. Um, and that helps Tan understand what's going on and helps her realize how to back away. Even though there's like a really sad face crack in her later where she does not understand what's about to happen to her and it's really heartbreaking. But we don't need to talk about that sad point. Another thing I really, really liked about this show is Olio's like gender exploration. So there's a really heartbreaking scene where essentially they're not together yet and there was drama between Ted and Olio. And Olio is in his mother's room, or in his room, or I don't know how, but he's in a room and, he's, and puts on a bra and starts like looking at himself. He's like thin and slender. I post the picture for a second, but then deletes it, but then another friend sees it and they're like, what's going on with you? But he has like this like gross cry session on the floor where it's like really, like he gross cries. And it's one of those things where you can interpret a lot different, a lot of different meanings. Because like I don't personally think it's like a trans thing or a gender non-binary thing, it kind of feels like, like, because earlier you talked about the female male protagonist and if it's okay to have two male protagonists, and I think it's more just like the thing that, you know, I personally went through this and I know other friends who have gone through this, but like when you're younger and gay and you kind of realize the world is against you, even though if people aren't telling you they don't like you, like the world is against you because you're different, and how your life would be so much easier if you could be a female, not because life for females are easier, but for this one instance of like loving a man, if you are a female, that's the normal street you go down. So it's like that weird dilemma of like, oh my god, if I could be a woman, I could be happy by the way I am on the inside kind of thing. And they kind of go into this a little bit more in I Promise You the Moon about his kind of like more feminine side growing more and more and how it's kind of othering to him. But I kind of like how they involve that and more. Oh, it was like 
feminine blossoming, which is kind of something, especially Thai dramas, where somebody's feminine is usually considered like a really, really bad trait, and it villainizes them. And this person becoming like beautiful, and also Ted does support him, especially um, earlier episodes of I Promise You the Moon, of him being feminine, and that's okay. Like, you're allowed to be who you are. So I thought that was like really cool and like a really powerful tendency that we don't see too often. And the last thing I want to talk about is towards the end, the whole college test exam thing. Um, this is a part I was not expecting to happen. Like a lot of the tropes, like you kind of expected all of them will get into school, whatever. And when they did to the last, you're like, oh, he's not going to get into it all. But he gets into like his second version of school, which he has a whole meltdown about because he. This is 100% in I Promise You the Moon. Like, he is, I have a path, and if anything changes, it ruins my whole life. Um, he's a very guarded person, and everything has to be to his dream. And that's kind of one of his problems with Oyo. So Oyo is not, he's not fickle, but he doesn't know what he wants. And that's kind of like a pressure point that also gets bigger in the following season. But anyways, um, there's a part where he knows Oyo isn't going to pass the exam. So he, or he thinks he isn't, so he gives up his spot he already had for him. And this is like this weird, like, hey, I'm a DL gay guy, and I'm gonna go 110% to do this thing I think is right. But it's like insulting and not actually good for the other person, so obviously Oyo denies it, and it causes another like, huge problem. And it was like weird, I wasn't expecting it. Um, but this caused like a lot of can of worms to open, and a lot of self-realization, so I guess it was really good for the character. Um, he needs kind of these things to happen to force him to face himself, so I guess it was kind of good. But I wasn't expecting that, it was really weird and sad, um, so I'm kind of glad it worked out in the end. And in season two, him getting to other school is actually much better for him anyways, but we'll talk about that in season two. <laughs> A cool thing about this though, is it kind of ends on how the story starts. So in the beginning of the story, they met on a spark, the firecrackers, and then the acting thing, Oyo kind of took his position, the role, and did better than him. And at the end of the show, they met at a Spark, the Chinese prep school. Like, ooh, I love you, Spark. And then at the end, um, Te spent his whole time helping, preparing him for this test. And then Oyo took his spot, but then also kind of denied him for it. So it's kind of like the same thing happened in the beginning is happening at the end. But the main difference is Te is actually grown, and this doesn't divide them. He has a stumble where he's like, oh my god, like, you monster, like, I did all this for you, and you slapped me in the face again. But he's able to move past this because he grew through all these trials and tribulations, and also, like, normal teenage things. Like, he did grow, bro, he did grow, he did grow and move on. So I kind of like that full circle moment where it actually forces you to understand that these people are different than they were in the beginning. Yay, character arc. And at the end, you know, Oyo got into school, so he has to do the running, do the sunset. I told the sunset about you. And this is kind of like a situation where they are forced to adhere to a promise they made earlier when they were still ignorant of things. So, and it's a really hard thing. Like, it's a huge run, it's very difficult. Um, but they do it together, and at the end, it's really joyous. And that theme of like sticking to a tradition or a promise when you're ignorant of things that might change and forcing yourself to stick to those plans, even though they may or may not be good for you, is like a big theme of growing up and going to college in season two. So I kind of like that's how it ends because it kind of prepares you for what's going to happen next. But yeah, um, I really, really like this show. Uh, I hope this was not too basic. I know I usually talk about a lot of, a lot of different things, but I kind of wanted to keep it short and sweet and did not want to give too much away, but the show is are like a must-see, you have to watch it. Also, their first kiss is this like really cool, beautiful underwater scene, and it's really cute, and it's nice, and it's just, yeah, it's really cool. And there's a lot of cute things that happen, like there's this part where Tun always knows that Oyo needs his back scratched if he starts to sneeze, and it's just like, there's a lot of small little things of cuteness that happen in the show. Um, yeah, it's really good. Like this one, it has to be a 10 out of 10 because it's just like super awesome. It's cute. And I think it's like, it's just so accurate and good. Um, I think it captures like teen love and also just like the awkwardness and like bloodiness of it. 
like people are like, oh, I hope they're together forever. I hope, oh, poor Bass. I hope he comes back and they can end up together. But like, I like that that doesn't really happen. The show shows like, like dating, like real dating, and it just felt like better. Um, so like, this is definitely a ten out of ten. And also like, Kuhn and people's acceptance of them is just really good. And also like, the characters are very. They're really handsome and cute, but they're not like, oh, I take off my shirt and I have like beautiful man boobs and like a giant ass and everything's perfect. It's like they just like look like like normal cool teens, which and they're also like not awkwardly over sexualized either. Like it's just like it just felt real and good. So I definitely recommend this um, if you can watch it. Um, and then definitely watch I promise you the movie which once that finishes, I'll give you a video about that later. It is really, really, really good. Um, I hope this was informative and not too fast and awkward. Uh, tell me how you feel in the comments. Did you like this show? Uh, are you watching the second one? How do you feel about the relationship? So, uh, like and subscribe, wear a mask, stay safe, and I hope to see you next week. Bye!